theory in practice. You should really make music of your theory. Basic theory and how to use it when you play. The sixth degree minor. Music theory and practice. What is going on here? How do you use your music theory and actually get music out of it? I want to take you through one of the most common progressions which happen in a jazz standard. This will really help your understanding of harmony, chords and scales. <laughs> In this tutorial, why is music theory important? How do I connect music theory to my play? Major scale harmony, building chords and scales, the minor sixth degree, full solo manual on There Will Never Be Another You, show play and analyze a short solo on There Will Never Be Another You. Hi there, I'm Sam Belgaard and welcome to Sam Belgaard's saxophone lessons. Why is music theory important? Music theory is important, but not more important than being able to hear the sounds and the differences in music. This is also why you need to take it slow when learning music theory. Take it slow so that you can play the music theory on your instrument and actually get a chance to hear it. To get a deeper knowledge of music, I believe you have to have a basic knowledge of music theory. For me, music theory makes me able to remember tunes easier. All functions, scale, chord, patterns and phrases has a name attached to it, which makes me able to choose the sound I want to hear because of the name. I connect a name to each sound I play. The music theory makes me play better by ear. How do I connect music theory to my playing? What comes first, the egg or the chicken? Sometimes you'll play something and think, what was that and how can I play this again? Other times you'll think of a structure and repeat this over a set of changes and afterwards think, oh, what an amazing sound. You connect your music theory to the music and the other way around when you are busy playing and studying music. It goes hand in hand. It's not one thing or the other thing, it's not like, black and white, it's all gray area. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? For example, when playing a major scale in F, you can think of this sound, or you can think of this as a technical exercise. If you think of it as the first step in a major scale fitting over an F major chord, you can play both as a sound and a technical exercise. But you can also apply this over a tune when you have an F major chord. The knowledge brings you to more uses of your technique and sound. When practicing and playing, you need to use all your ear training skills, all of your technique and all of your music theory skills to get this together. Major scale harmony. Most standards out of the American songbook and very many original jazz tunes consist of more or less diatonic harmony. This is harmony which you can analyze looking at it from the perspective of a major scale. Most harmony is explained looking at it from the major scale and the steps in the major scale. Major scale, F major. Looking at the steps in the F major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the one again on there. When we look at harmony, we start with splitting the scale up in numbers from 1 to 7. Because all 12 keys in Western music notation system all are built in the same form and the same structure, we are able to use the same analysis on all the major scales. There are two key notes in the major scale as I laid it out here. The first key note is the root of the scale, the F. <laughs> This note, the F in the F major scale, the C in the C major scale, is called the root. It always has the same note as the scale itself. So the F major scale is the root of the F. The second important note is the seventh note in the major scale, the E. This is the E of the F major scale, so the seventh note. This E in the F major scale, the seventh note, is leading towards the root. So it's leading towards the root, like this. This is a very important note because of its leading effect. We use this all the time to get to this root. The leading tone works because it is between the seventh and the root, and it's only a half step. 
the half step between the E and the F. This is like this in all major scales. This knowledge we'll use to define more functions of the F major scale. Building chords. In jazz music we look at a melody and then we fit the harmony. Sometimes it's the other way around. The harmony is built of chords and we build out of scales and this way we build a melody out of these scales out of this harmony. Here is how to build harmony out of an F major scale. From each note in the major scale you can build one chord. The chord is built from the root note. The root note is the note of the scale. On top of the root note we add thirds from the scale to get the full chord. The first chord we are building is the chord from the root note F. The third step we are adding, we just pick from the scale a third up. So in this way we get an F major 7 chord on the first degree of our F major. So we're getting this, the root, we go up the scale, a third, we add the A, then we have an F and an A, we go a third up, we have a C, we go a third up from the C, we have a F major 7, F A C E. We keep building on the other steps of the scale. Like that. We add the names of the chord and in this way we all have diatonic harmony in a major scale. F major, G minor, A minor, B flat major, C7, D minor 7 and an E half diminished 7 chord. Building scales. Building scales is maybe more easy than building chords. To find the scale fitting the chord, you just play the major scale from the root of the chord going up the scale. So for example, on the F major, you are just playing F major scale. So looking for this scale that fits the root of the chord. For example, if you want to play the scale fitting the F major 7 chord, yeah, you play the scale F major going from the F up the F major scale. To play the scale fitting the 6th degree chord, the D minor chord, you play the same scale, the 6th degree, from the root of the D minor chord. So you're playing the scale, the same scale where you found the chord, so the D minor, and then you're playing this scale up. That's the D minor 7 chord. Just adding this scale under it. I just keep playing the scale further up, so no hocus pocus there. The scale continues through the whole staff, so you can add the whole F major scale in all as, as high as you want, as low as you want. The sixth degree minor. In many, many jazz tunes, we either start on the sixth degree minor, the famous blue bossa is a great example of this. Over tunes like There Will Never Be Another You, we start in major and then move to the 6th degree minor. The 6th degree minor is a very important function to be able to recognize and be able to play. In the major scale, the 6th degree minor is the D minor 7 chord. When we look at There Will Never Be Another You, we find the 6th degree minor in the 5th bar. There it is. We just saw that the scale of the D minor 7 chord is an F major scale played from the D. Further, we know how the chord looks like, beginning on the D and keep adding thirds in the scale till we have four notes. From F major to D minor. The question now is, how do we suddenly get from F major to D minor? When we look at bar 3, we see an E half diminished chord. The 7th degree chord on the F major scale. It is totally inside the F major scale. Same rules apply. You just play the scale from the root of the E up. Playing the scale from the root. Basically an F major scale starting on the E. The steps are F major, E half diminished, D minor 7. This is a very logical way to go to the D minor looking at the roots of the chords. The F, the E and the D. For now I'm skipping the A7, but it sounds like this. Those are the roots. The chords are... Like that. If you play the chords next to each other, it sounds very logical. Then we need to look at the chord in between. The A7 flat 9 chord, the dominant chord. The dominant chord is dominant chord because the A7 flat 9 contains the C sharp, 
This is the leading tone to the D. We talked about the leading tone, that's a half step from the root. The half step from the F was an E to F. The half step from the D is C sharp to D. The A7 flat 9 also contains a tritone. I'll get into this later, but the tritone interval is this. So between the C sharp and the G. Those are the rules of the dominant. The C sharp is leading to the D, what I just mentioned, as the E is leading to the F in F major. We have borrowed the C sharp from the key of D major and just put it in this D minor chord. So we get the C sharp instead of the C, as you see in this scale. We do this because we, there is no C sharp in the F major scale, where we got the D minor scale from. You following me? We took the D minor scale out of the F major, there's no C sharp there. And then we'll borrow this C sharp from the D major scale, adding this because we want this leading tone, adding this to the A7 because we want, on a dominant, we want the leading tone. The scale we want to use in the A7 flat 9 is therefore also containing a C sharp and it looks like this, the A7 flat 9 chord. So we just add this C sharp. Okay, we have the B flat on top, we have the third note is the C sharp, the C sharp goes through there. Starting point of the scale, the root of the A7, we have the C sharp from the D major, we have our full chord, the B flat we're getting from the F major of course. We have our full scale, we have our chords. Example lines on F major to D minor 7. What we're going to play is F major scale in bar 1 and 2 and 3. Bar 4, we are only substituting the C with the C sharp. In bar 5, we again play F major. Of course, we need to keep an eye on what chords we are playing and we have to adjust to the chord notes and the roots of the chords. My first line sounds like this. Playing that a little bit slowly. scale and arpeggio of the F major chord in the first two bars. On the E half diminished I play the F major scale, no extras, just going up that F major scale and of course from the E hitting those target notes, going up that uh, arpeggio, up the scale and arpeggio of the E half diminished 11. On the A7 I play the scale down from the 7th, substituting of course the C, what we just talked about, with the C sharp, the leading tone to the D. Ending on D minor, playing up and down the D minor 9 arpeggio. I play relatively simple lines, moving up and down the scales and the arpeggios, outlining the chord notes. <laughs> arpeggios rounding the low F up the scale and arpeggio to the 9th. On the E7 half diminished playing the arpeggio down and up from the 9th, playing a 3, 1, 2, 3 pattern running up the arpeggio and scale surrounding the F on the D minor chord. Playing scale between the 3rd and the 5th and going down the scale and arpeggio of the D minor 7 chord. Again staying focused on the chord notes and filling scales in between. Again changing the C with a C sharp on the A7 flat 9. Full solo manual on There Will Never Be Another You. Getting a good start on soloing on any standard is very very important. The first steps, getting the most important basics up and running gives you so much overview on any given tune you want to play. The full solo manual on There Will Never Be Another You is giving you exactly this. Overview, basic skills, chords and scales, written out solo examples using basic skills. The full solo manual on There Will Never Be Another You is both a technical and music manual giving you ways to practice technique and playing music. Give it a spin, the link is in the description. Show, play and analyze a short solo on There Will Never Be Another You. Down the 
F major chord, 9th to 3rd, approaching the C in the 2nd bar. Down the F major 9 arpeggio, chromatically surrounding the E of the E half diminished 7, playing approach notes to the 3rd of the G. Up the E7 half diminished arpeggio, hitting the 3rd of the A7 flat 9, the C sharp, leading to the D, approach note to the G in the bar 5. The approach notes are pulled through and becomes approach notes to the F on the 3rd beat of the bar 5, playing down the arpeggio over the bar line to bar 6. The D minor, at the end of bar 6, I play a bebop approach to the E flat and the C minor 7. Up the E flat major chord, upper structure of the C minor 9, chromatically adding the D flat, getting the C halfway the bar, playing up another C minor arpeggio, leading towards the 3rd of the F7. Playing a thrill on the A, adding bebop chromatic notes, going to the E flat, playing a 7, 1, 2, 3 pattern on the F7. Playing a B flat major 9 arpeggio down. Getting more music theory in your practice. The 251 is one of the most used progressions in jazz music. If you need more info on this theory in practice, I would recommend you this video. The link is in the description. Analyze, recognize the 251, know your theory and apply it. Put your comments in the comment section and I will get back to you. Questions are welcome. Share and like if you want. It's great if you do. All links mentioned in this video are available below in the description. Play music, have fun.